Hmm. Turning your authorized version of the scriptures to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. We will be reading verses 20 on to verse 25. Follow me, Lord. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Remember, wisdom is equated with the fear of the Lord, and being prudent is equated with one who is wise, who fears the Lord. Okay? And when someone is prudent in their own eyes or in their own sight, hmm, woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Turn to Romans. <laughs> Romans chapter 13. The go-to to the ones who are, are bowing their knees to the tyranny of government. Romans chapter 13. We will be reading verses 1. Oh, on to verse 8. Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Apparently in my nation, President Harris, uh, my wife showed me, uh, President Harris called some emergency meeting. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, verse 1 tells us that the powers to be are, are ordained of God. Yes. Kamala Harris, for America, the government within uh, the nation of Australia, those people have been ordained of God for judgment upon wicked nations. Yes. Yes, Kamala Harris, President Harris, as you know, she has uh, been ordained of God, allowed, uh, you know, the Jesuits put her in power, but our Lord ordained it for judgment against our nation. Never mind smoking Joe. Never mind him. Okay, it's Kamala Harris. Okay. But yes, they were ordained of God. And to do what? To execute his judgment. Okay, but see, most people stop at verse two. So see, see, when uh, when they come calling, you gotta, you know, you got when they say jump, you gotta say how high, right, right. Verse three: For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Uh, there is none good but who. God. And if you are to follow the scriptures, you will be doing what is good. Okay? And when man's laws contradict what is written in the scriptures, 
What do you do? See, in Scripture, the Pharaoh during the time of Joseph was a good ruler. He was. The Pharaoh in the time of Moses, uh, uh, during that time when Moses was born, okay, that Pharaoh was a wicked Pharaoh. That is the Pharaoh that we liken on to Satan, okay? Okay? But the first, the Pharaoh before that, talked about in Genesis, not the one in Exodus, and so forth. That Pharaoh before Exodus was a decent, good ruler. He was a wise ruler, okay? Uh, even some of the pagan kings were wise rulers, okay? And when you have rulers that are not a terror to good works, then Yes, be submissive unto them. But when you have a nation that is a terror to good works, I mean, we're going to play this video. Wow. Wow. Okay. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay? What is evil and what is good? What is good is according to the scripture. But when your uh, nation is going against the scripture, what do you choose? You live by the scriptures. You live according to the scriptures. Okay? And if our Lord says something, and what our nation say is contrary to what our Lord says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, people will take the Sermon on the Mount, and tell you that as a Christian, it's your duty to uh, kill yourself with the steel of the Jesuit punier. It's your duty. And get poisoned with graphene oxide. And they will say, Jesus, would be. they're lying. That's not true. That is not true. See, the nations are a terror to good works. You're not saved. You're lost. Huh? You're, uh, you, you think you're saved because you believed, huh? Better be careful. Because what we're looking at, what we're going to see is coming to us here in America. Let's continue in Romans chapter 13. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For, for, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Verse 6, paying taxes. Okay, paying taxes. This is talking about police and stuff like that, that are there to protect us from evildoers, from robbers, from murderers, from thieves, all and you know, from fraudulent stuff and, and you know things like that. Okay, you know, to have protection from our fellow man. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you kill someone, you deserve to go to jail for. It. Okay, you steal. You deserve to get punished for it, even go to jail for it. Okay? Bearing false witness, and so on and so forth. Yes. But see, when you as the church of the living God seek to live your life according to the scriptures, and that you remember that um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, hold your place here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
verses uh, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at verse 17. You know how in the book of Revelation, where it says in uh, Revelation 14, whosoever, let, let's go there. Okay, let's go there. This is important. Okay, Revelation chapter, did I say 17? Sorry, 14. Revelation chapter 14. Okay, With all this, all this is leading up to the mark of the beast. Okay. Revelation chapter 14. Okay. Uh, let's see. Verse 11. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image and... Whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever. Okay? Whoever. Okay? It doesn't matter in the time of Jacob's trouble if you are keeping the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. You take the mark of the beast, you're done, you're going to hell. It says in verse 11, Whosoever. That does not exclude those uh, tribulation or uh, time of Jacob's trouble saints. See? Okay, that does not exclude the time of Jacob's troubles, time of Jacob's trouble saints. Okay? It says, whosoever. It means whosoever. Okay? No one is exempt. The 144,000 Jews who are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble, that's different. They're sealed. They're the only ones that are. And they're not Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way. They're Jews. Okay? But here, see verse 11? Look, don't look at me. Whosoever. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. These devils want you to believe that you're just going to go into that time period and just believe and be eternally secure while serving the Vatican through that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? <laughs> No, it says whosoever. Whosoever, that means anybody. No one is exempt. You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. That's what all these devils are preparing you for. Okay? Now go back to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Come on. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, now, you're saved, you're born again, you're converted. Guess what? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have in you, given to you of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord himself is that spirit, okay? The Lord himself is that circumcision made without hands. You have God living within you. Therefore, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And verse 17 says, If any man... Defile the temple of God. That includes yourself, yes. But that also includes those who want to kill you with the steel of the Jesuit punyard. Think about that, brethren, Church of the Living God. That doesn't mean that someone won't probably try, <laughs> okay? But uh, if anyone does that to you or does something to defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Now look at this. For the temple of God is holy, which ye, plural, specifically addressing the church of the living God, are. Okay? So verse 17, if any man, any man, is not there, that there's no distinction in any man. That's any man. Any man. Defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye, church of the living God, are. 
right? Go back to Romans now. Verse 7. Uh, let's read verse 6 again. For this, for, for this cause, pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. What happens when, in a nation where you're afraid to call the police? What happens in a nation when you're afraid to call the ambulance or go to a hospital because of what they will do to you? Because of the Jesuit um, psychological operation that's in place right now. Hmm? What do you do? Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Let's read verse 9, just because we can. The commandments for us today in this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Uh, if you're not using the authorized, ver uh, authorized version of the scriptures, there's a very important part in this verse that's going to be missing if you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, you're not reading the authorized version of the scriptures? Is that in there? No, it's not. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandments, wait, 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 where's keeping the Sabbath? Oh, oh, really? Uh-huh, yeah. It's not a requirement for us today. Pertaining to salvation, staying saved, or whatever, okay? It is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, now, we're going to watch this video. It's about five minutes. Um, Brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, <laughs> please, please keep in your prayers our brothers and sisters. Sorry, getting to a place where we're going to, going to be reading. Please keep in your prayers our brothers and sisters in Australia. That This is a picture, my American countrymen. Of what's coming to us. Okay. This is coming our way. This is probably coming to your nation. If it isn't there already. This is what we have to look forward to. Check this out. Good morning, ladies and gents. Thank you, Premier. Thanks, Minister. The New South Wales Police Force will launch Operation Stay at Home. Sunday at midnight, New South Wales Police will be supported by the Australian Defence Force. As you know, there are already 300 men and women of the ADF on the ground and an additional 500 will come online from Monday. During the week, the Police Minister and I approached the Premier about some enhancements to the health order and most of those were requests that came from the field, the police in the field who were having difficulties getting compliance from some members of the community. The movement, particularly in Greater Sydney, uh, was way too high from our perspective in terms of what we were trying to achieve. And our part in this is to get New South Wales health ahead of the Delta variants. The fines are some of the biggest fines that I've... <laughs> ahead of it. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry, just listen to this. I've ever seen, and we will be issuing them as of today. So can I say to the members of the community out there is that you may think that leaving your LGA to train is okay, but it's not. You've got a 5K limit now from your house in Greater Metro Sydney. We will be enforcing that. You do have to carry identification there's a whole range of other health orders that we can use against you. I closed the first business this morning, a cafeteria at Leichhardt for 14 days for continual breaches of the health order. And I won't apologise that more businesses will be closed over the next 21 days. 
The permit system is essential in terms of protecting regional New South Wales. And I would ask. So these people in Australia are poor brothers and sisters. Um, they need papers to go to and fro. They need permits and stuff to drive a car, to go out of their homes. This, this is actually happening, brethren. This is actually happening. Okay. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, verses one unto verse three. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Peace and safety? They're doing this for peace and safety? They're doing this for your good? Uh -huh. From Monday, there will be information online on the government website in terms of how to access a permit, and the permit system will come in place midnight Friday next week. I think it's important that those people who have been getting around the orders, taking family vacations to other premises, that is over. The permit will only allow generally one person to travel for what is essential business. Premier spoke about the assets that will be involved in this operation. There are 1,400 men and women in the New South Wales Highway Patrol who now will be dedicated to COVID compliance duties on our roads. You would have seen roadblocks. Uh, compliance officers. Compliance officers. That's what he's referring to. And the ADF, if I'm not mistaken, one of you uh, brethren from Australia, correct me, uh, Australian Defence Force, something like that. The Australian military, basically. Martial law both south and north over the last couple of days and across Greater Sydney and into regional New South Wales, expect to see more roadblocks where we'll be checking with compliance. Some of the strongest laws, some of the strongest police action coming. I'm not apologetic. Please don't write and complain to me. We've given ample warnings and cautions. That time has gone. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to do this to you whether you like it or not. Wow. Wow. This is for your safety. This is for your own good. Going to lock people in their own homes and turn everything into a Nazi state. Just like what they did to the Jews in the ghettos. Now it's on everyone. Now, <laughs> get a lot of this. Firstly, in relation to police operations, there will be a visible and increased police presence in the affected local government areas, including deployment of specialised commands and including a riot squad, highway patrol and uh, increased presence more broadly. Uh, from Monday, there'll be 500 extra Australian Defence officers on the ground as well, following a request by New South Wales Police. There'll be enhanced random checkpoints at key roads with uh, accompanying electronic warning signs uh, so that police have every ability with that increased presence to clamp down on people doing the wrong thing. Uh, from Monday... Doing the wrong uh, the help thing. Doing the wrong thing. Very interesting. Like uh, trying to go out, trying to live. <laughs> wow, wow, this, this is insane. Keep our brethren in Australia in, in your prayers, brethren, please. Play, uh, pray for your brothers and sisters in Australia. Oh, Lord have mercy. Orders will be formally enforced from midnight. However, between now and then, police will still be able to impose these additional fines, uh, even though the health orders kick in on Monday morning uh, after midnight. Uh, between now and then, if police have evidence that you're doing the wrong thing in any of these categories, these additional fines will apply. So five- Terror to good works. 
$1,000 for on-the-spot breach of home quarantine, which is currently $1,000. $5,000 on the spot for lying on a permit, which is already a criminal offence. Uh, $5,000 on the spot fine for lying to a contact tracer, which is already a criminal offence. $3,000 on the spot fine for breaching the two-person exercise rule in, in any way. $3,000 on the spot fine for breaching rules going into regional New South Wales. Uh, in Greater Sydney and other lockdown areas, uh, but not the local government areas of concern, the 10 kilometre rule will come down to five kilometres. So you can obviously do activity within your local government area, but instead of five, uh, 10 kilometres from your home, it will be five kilometres from your home. And that's for all of Greater Sydney. All those areas which aren't the local government areas of concern will now be have, have imposed on them the five kilometres instead of the 10 kilometres. In affected local government areas, we want to stress that exercise means only exercise and supervision of children. So the word recreation uh, will not leave any doubt that word is taken out in terms of those local government areas. Of wow. Did you get all that? $5,000 fine, $5,000 fine. These pe people can't pay that. But see, that's the point. Wow. And see the recreation, how this... Uh, woman is changing the definition of a term right in front of your face, euphemistic language, doublespeak, uh, that's Jesuit. Welcome to the tyranny of the Jesuit order. Welcome to a picture of the new dark ages when Roman Catholicism world, uh, rules. God help you, our brothers and sisters in Australia. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, protect you all. Concern. Exercise means exercise. Many people know that, but unfortunately, some people were trying to, um, to, to get around the rules that were imposed. In affected local government areas, you will need to register your single buddy to make sure that people aren't abusing that rule. And also, importantly, for regional New South Wales, you will need a permit to go into regional New South Wales, uh, whether you're an authorised worker, whether you're travelling to a second home because you might be a worker utilising a second home, or whether you're inspecting real estate. You will need a permit. The permit system will be effective from next Saturday, but obviously between now and then, police can stop you and seek evidence for what you're doing. And if you're doing the wrong thing, you'll have those extra fines imposed. Good morning, ladies. Yeah. Yeah, brethren. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Un unbelievable. This is what's going to, uh, something like this is going to be coming to our nation too, here in America. You're not saved, people. You're not going to be, you can't face what's coming without the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You can't. See, it's either or. You're either saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, of his body, church of the living God, or you're lost, and you're going to go along with this. Now, law, there are lost people out there who are not. But then again, what are you fighting for? You lost people. You need to be saved. Psalm 118, my wife's favorite psalm, I think. <laughs> you need to get saved. You need to come to the Lord broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord and may he save you. Because if you don't God our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you have no hope. There is no hope for you unless our Lord Jesus Christ save you. And on to you, our brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. 
because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? All they can do is kill you. See, the Jesuits, they'll kill you. And unfortunately, yeah, they'll go after your family and everything. Because remember, the Jesuits do not forgive nor forsake. Okay? See, but if you're saved, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? If you're not saved, you have a lot to fear. A lot. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. <laughs> yeah, that plays in uh, with the previous video today. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Trust in the Lord that he saves you. Not you saving yourself by your own belief. Or you just accept him. Um, he's Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who does the accepting. Uh, not the other way around. It is better to trust in the Lord than than to put confidence in princes. Look, look, look at our look at the governments. Okay, princes, rulers, those who are above you, especially when they are a terror to good works. Are you gonna try to sit there and tell me that these poor people that are gonna be going through this from in Australia, that these 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 government agents led by the Jesuits, that, that they're not a terror to good works? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. All nations can pass me about. But in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about. Yea, they can pass me about. But in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Get a load of those verses. You may be, you're going to be surrounded on every side, brother, sister. The greater who is in than he greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That spirit of Antichrist. For there are many Antichrists out there right now. Verse twelve. They can pass me about like bees, swarming you. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Look at that, okay, in, from verse 10 to 12. Um, in the name of the Lord. Uh, in the name of the Lord, will I destroy them? Verse 10. In the name of the Lord, will I destroy them? Verse 11. In the name, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. There's power in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have power within us. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God who created the heaven and the earth and all things therein dwells within you. If you are saved, born again, converted. <laughs> uh, verse 5 or verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You're not saved. You have everything to fear. Verse 13, thou hast, thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me up. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. 
And who sits on the right hand of, of God? Oh, that would be our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Meaning, he is the Christ, the anointed one, the king. Okay? So, the right hand of the Lord. See, look at that. Okay? The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. Referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. He's coming back as king to rule upon his throne in the kingdom of heaven at Jerusalem. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Yes. Being out there giving uh, being a living, walking testimony of the Lord's grace and mercy upon you for him saving you. A walking, living testimony. A living testimony by living according to the scriptures. The Lord has ch hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Yes, because we are to be pure, Sanctified, separate, holy, other than that. Went along with it, especially when your government is a terror to good works. Trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and stay in the word and live according to his word. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go in, I will go into them. And I will praise the Lord. The gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Gate. Gate is kind of like a door, isn't it? Uh, who is the door? Who is the door? Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Read John chapter 10 on your own time. Okay. I will praise thee. For thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The Lord will hear you. You come to him on his terms, broken and contrite. Broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow. And you did it to him. It's your fault. It's my fault. That sorrow will produce godly fear. The fear of the Lord. Excuse me. The fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord, call upon him. Call upon the name of the Lord. And he'll save you. The stone which the builders refused has become the head of the headstone of the corner. Obviously, talking about Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's not talking about Pope Peter. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. I just Brad eyes that. Beg your pardon. Okay. That's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe that is. Okay. Let's continue. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. And see, the, these charismatic devils like to take that uh, verse way out of context. The prosperity that is being uh, referenced to is salvation. Being in the Lord, joying in the Lord. That is the prosperity that is being talked about there in context. Remember that. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. No kidding. Which hath shewed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. This, see, in context, the prosperity, what's being talked about, see? O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. 
for his mercy. No, brother, sister, we were to die today, we'd go to be home with the Lord. Some of us uh, hope to stick around to protect our loved ones. Okay, absolutely. But um, you're not saved. You're not saved. There is no hope for you. This is what's something like this is coming to America very soon and to other nations. Prepare yourselves. If you're not saved, may the Lord save you. Get over yourself, man. Get over yourself. Come to the Lord on his terms. And may he save you. That's going to be it for this video. This was a very impromptu video as well, um, like both of the videos were today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you do, brethren, please, brethren, Church of the Living God, pray for your brothers and sisters in Australia. Pray for them. Pray for uh, his mercy onto his body. And for those who will be saved, come to the Lord and be saved. Time is almost up. We don't know how much longer we got to go. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Oops. <laughs>